fun out here at the Bakersfield Yard on a Sunday afternoon. Thought that I'd uh, do a little walk around to the Bakersfield Yard. Uh, there's not a lot of left there as far as uh, buildings go. As a matter of fact, there's very little left there as far as buildings go. Uh, but anyway, there's still a few things out there. The, the turntable is there and there's some history out there. I'll talk about a little of that. Uh, where things used to be, I don't know. So come on along, let's go see what's out there. All right, let's start here. This is called the 50 lead, and this is the north or the west yard lead. This is the first lead that goes off into the yard. Gets used every single day. And as you can see, it peels off down toward the depot, crosses Baker Street, goes in front of the depot, then uh, splits off into other tracks that go into the yard. crossover right here so when trains come in out of the yard if they need to be on the number one or number two track this will put them where they need to be you can see we have a significant almost population around here but anyway this is the start of the yard from north to south or west to east depending on which railroad you work for we are here at the Beale Street, under the Beale Street overpass. As you can hear, it's noisy as hell. Looking west, down towards the depot. And this is the uh, north or west yard lead. There is the one that goes into the servicing facilities and then these tracks, which have been covered up and this one here actually still goes up towards the uh, where the roundhouse used to be, and that's where we will be here in a minute, up at that part of the facility. But uh, you can see all the uh, tracks splitting off different directions here, and they went every which way. Uh, there used to be tracks that went everywhere in this yard. Didn't used to have trucks and stuff to get things around but now we do so that all became irrelevant that is the uh, last fuel tank we had we no longer use that it's now out of service you see it's a 420,000 gallon tank the one down in the yard that way which was taken out some time back we'll go up there in a little bit in a little bit but uh it was, God, it was three or four times the size of that tank. I mean, how, gallons, how many gallons that thing held? It was gigantic. But anyway, uh, there was an oil reclamation pit there. You used to, when it used to work, you change your oil in your car, you could bring your can of used oil, waste oil down here and pour it in that pit down there. And it would uh, reclaim it. It would go into that tank over there and it would be pumped out into vacuum trucks and sold for its whatever purposes they used waste oil for. Anyway, this is that part of the yard. Hey, we are down a little further in the yard. This is uh, these concrete pads here. This is where the B&B, uh, &B, the bridges and building shop used to be uh, wasn't a real big shop but over here in the back was uh where they kept all their wood and always smelled really good in there but uh but this is uh where that was and then at this end of the shop i think this is where the water service was right here and uh, the water service was just what it implied it was a uh, the department that took care of the railroad had its own water uh, and their own pipelines and feeds to different places uh, that's not the case anymore we 
No longer have a water department, a water service, at least not here in Bakersfield or Fresno. And I don't remember what was here, to be honest with you. And then, uh, as you can see, there's concrete pads all the way down through here. Uh, down at this end was the electrical department. There were a few buildings. Gosh, I can't remember what they all were. But uh, the last building that stood over here was this one here. And after the water service and B&B &B moved out of it, the maintenance of way department, the track guys, uh, were over here for a few years and then they moved them over into the building with us and demolished this building. This is where the machine shops were. Uh, this is the, where the, I guess it would have been called the engine house. Now the roundhouse was where they went to uh, put, get trains ready to go out, back out on the road, do minor servicing. This is where they would bring locomotives in uh, and work on them, do major repairs and uh, they, they machine parts for the locomotives in here. It was a, it was a major operation. It was a large building. I've only seen pictures of it. It was gone by the time I came to work here. I don't know when they tore it out. But all these pads here and everything within that compound is relatively new. I don't know, it's probably been here for 15 years, but it looks like it's 100 years old. and. These were also service tracks for the uh, for the uh, engine shop, but it was a uh, was a big facility, and it came out here. See this cement pad here? There were parts of it that extended out here. Uh, there were tracks. Most of those tracks have been pulled up. There's still remnants of them around here. You saw the ones back there when we first came into the yard itself, and there are more here and there. A couple of the questions that I'm asked often about the yard in Bakersfield are, number one, is the turntable still there? And number two, does it still work? The answer to both of those questions is yes. It is still here. There it is. It does still work, but they rarely ever use it. Uh, I wanted to shoot from right here because most of the tracks leading out of the roundhouse have been pulled up, but you can see these rails right here came here and stopped. These were cert this was a, a service bay for a locomotive. It stopped at the end of the roundhouse, but I thought it was cool if you look right here. This is the brick foundation for the outer wall of the roundhouse. The brick is still there. That's pretty cool, I think. But uh, well, there was a service bay there. Here was another one. This is the uh, track that led out of here where we went up alongside the uh, engine shop, uh, machine shop. That way, that whole stuff was all over there. We'll look at that in a minute. And uh, this is the only track that leads out of the turntable anymore, but it is no longer connected to anything. Uh, it's all pulled up over there and taken out. BNSF going uh, back into his yard through Kern Junction. But anyway, this is no longer connected. The only thing they use this turntable for now is if they need to pull an engine in from one of the service tracks for the car department to put him out on another one. And right now, the other track is blocked by a caboose that's been sitting there forever. So it's unlikely they've used this. I was talking to a 
Carmen the other day and he said they're talking about taking this out. Uh, it's kind of a shame, but you know, they don't ever use it. And this is right at the end of the turntable itself, the edge. There's the old shack. As you can see, there's one just like it over on the other end. This is where it's operated from. And the foot switch down there to make it go. Forward and reverse the gears. There used to be a light in here when people might have used this at night. And out into the pit. And the roundhouse itself, uh, where those trailers are, where the noses of those trailers are, would, is about where the wall of the roundhouse would have been. And it went all the way from there, right center frame. You can see the old bay tracks there. It went all the way over to about where that you just to the right of where that yellow trailer is. It was an 18 stall roundhouse at one time. And uh, you can see that there's a rail down there. It has a set of little train wheels that ride on that rail. And it's driven by electric motors at each end of the turntable, so it turns evenly. But uh, this service track here doesn't look like it's been used in a long time. It's got a little things, but that is probably signifies that this track is out of service. You don't go beyond it, and as you can see, there's an old caboose over there that the SP or UP police used to use for a mobile station and as I said this track and that track are the only ones connected to the turntable anymore and that also has an out of service uh, sign in the middle of that track so I wouldn't blame the company for getting rid of the turntable itself. Uh, I don't know why really. I don't suppose it costs anything to be here. Anyway, you can see all these are the tracks leading into the bays. They're all tagged. They're all signed out of service. So no one mistakenly tries to pull an engine into one of them when the turntable's running. When I came to work here, the roundhouse was the only part left, went from right there at the end of those upper pipes, those upper stands there, to about right there. It was just very little of it left. Most of the roundhouse was destroyed in the 52 earthquake or damaged so badly that they wasn't usable anymore, so they took it down. They continued to use this facility, but it was pretty much you know it was getting towards the end of the steam era and this wasn't as uh, necessary as it was once the diesels started coming in I did bring diesels in here and work on them occasionally but uh, this was a this was a leftover of the steam era damn shame but this did look cool I've seen pictures of it and I'll put one in here but anyway that is turntable in Bakersfield. And this is the caboose I was talking about that they used to use. It's sitting back here in the one of these service tracks. That, that building right there is where the car department is. There are still a few carmen who work here. Most of them go out to uh, train or a car that may have a problem to work on. They do work here in the yard sometimes. That lumber car has been here for a few days. 
and uh, I don't know what's wrong with it, but I saw him working on it the other day. And an old lube engine lube oil tank. It's no longer in service. I don't use any of the servicing facilities here anymore. But that is exactly what this place is. This is the old service facility. I would pull the engines in here. Have these service pits. They could uh, go underneath them, inspect them, work on them, do whatever. Those small hoppers up there on those swinging arms were the uh, sanding. Uh, that's how they put sand in the, in the sand tanks on the locomotives. Those of you who don't know, uh, locomotives have, uh, they use sand for traction. And they were taking off or going up a hill and they have a little hose right in front of the wheels, little nozzle that they dump sand out, not very much, just enough to give them a little traction. And there were two of these side by side, and this facility was definitely in use when I worked here. I, they shut this down in the 90s, but uh, it was a busy place. This part of it was a busy place uh, when I worked here, and as you can see, that is no longer the case. And right over there, you see the dirt work, the excavation work. That is where they are going to build the new offices. And right <coughs> there, center frame there, is where the Yardmaster's Tower used to be. And he tore that down in the 90s, moved the Yardmaster up to the yard, and now they no longer have a Yardmaster because we just don't do that much work in the yard anymore. And, uh,. That is looking up toward the turntable where the roundhouse would have been. There was a track that came out of there, right up through here. Obviously, the rails for that have been pulled up. And it came out here and just about where that fire hydrant is there. Is where the fueling racks were. And the fueling racks were tied to the tank that was in that levee over there and the trains would pull up here and uh, they would fuel them up. There are, are no more fueling racks in Bakersfield obviously and now when they need to fuel trucks and or, and now when they need to fuel trains here they have to bring in a tanker which isn't capable of filling up the tank the fuel tank of a, of a locomotive. Sometimes it becomes a problem. But anyway, that's where the fueling rack was. And this concrete pad right here is where the old warehouse was. And there was a track that served it that went right alongside that concrete pad. And when I came to work here, it was no longer the, uh, the yard warehouse, it's where the signal department was. The signal department and the communications department worked out of this uh, warehouse. The offices were up front at that end and then the warehouse was in the back and we kept all our crap in there. But uh, when I went to work here in 1979, this is where I came and did my interview with a guy named Gray Tisdale. And uh, a couple of weeks later, they gave me a call and hired me. And I think they were smart to hire me. I was smart to stay. And uh, now it's almost done. There's a sign warning people that remote control locomotives operate in this area. Locomotive cabs may be unoccupied. Uh, they don't use remote control in Bakersfield. They have a switching crews that work down here, but you get places like Fresno and they do use remote control up there and this is just telling you that remote control could be in use here so if you're ever trespassing on railroad property in the yard make sure you watch out for any trains that may not have someone in them because they may still be working this uh, concrete pad right here and there's more of it under all that scrap rail there 
is where the a and we shop was automotive and work equipment the railroad used to work on all of its own equipment you would bring your trucks down here if there was something wrong with them and the mechanics would work on trucks they worked on track equipment they worked on just about anything that had engines in it uh, small engines you know that ran the uh, track uh, little small track equipment they use so little of that stuff anymore but uh, they used to have all kinds of uh, of equipment that was operated by single operators and uh, this is where they would get worked on and this was one of the uh, Kentucky Street entrances on the north side of the yard there were two of them there was this one which was the main Kentucky Street entrance and down there a ways you can see the uh, that was the uh, still is I guess a diesel storage tank but uh, the other gate was down closer to where that tank is. Or that's where we used to come in for the uh, when the signal department offices were still on this side of the yard. But anyway, that's that. There's an old uh, loading dock right there made out of dirt rail and ties. Obviously hasn't been used in many, many, many years. This is where the car department stores its axles and wheels when they come in. I, they bring these in on trucks and unload them with a crane. I always found it amusing that they use trucks to haul train wheels instead of bringing them in on trains, pulling them into this track right here and unload them with a crane, but I don't know. Maybe wherever they make these, there's no rail access, who knows. Anyway, most of the yard is just used for storage now. Uh, the tracks are obviously still used but as far as buildings go the only buildings that still exist in the Bakersfield yard are the depot and the REA building and this levee big old giant thing here you can see off over there this is where the uh, huge diesel tank that they used to kept it full to fuel the trains here back when this was an active yard they took this tank out, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe longer than that now. It was a gigantic tank though, I don't remember what exact size it was, but as with everything else in the yard now, it's just used to store stuff in. Scrap ties, a couple of couches, don't know if those, somebody brought those in and dumped them or if those came out of one of the old offices. BNSF going out off of UP onto the BNSF, going onto their own track out that way. That is Kern Junction. They will cross Sumner Street right there and head on into their yard. And uh, this is where the ice decks were. Uh, right over there. About where those ties are all stacked is where the ice plant was. Pacific Fruit Express had its own ice plant, made its own ice, had a little tramway that went over to the decks that were here, <clears throat> and they would pull the reefer cars, and this was before the era of uh, having diesel-powered refrigerators on each car. The ends of each car had a space in them that was insulated from the outside, and uh, they would bust those blocks up as they came across uh, onto the ice deck. They had guys that worked up there with pikes and tools that broke the ice into smaller pieces and those guys would push the ice down the deck and push it off into the, there were openings in the tops at the ends of the car and they would push it off in there and fill those, fill the ends of the cars with ice, seal the cars up and that would keep the produce uh, cool. And from my what I understand it was very efficient as far as cooling, it costs a lot in ice, so the modern type of reefers are obviously much more efficient, but they worked with what they had back then and they had some good ideas that worked well. And they used the ice docks, I believe in, up into the 60s, uh, if anybody knows exactly when they stopped doing that, uh, put it in the comments below. And, uh, anyway, this is where the ice decks were, were in Bakersfield. And 
right here where these trees are, all that old scrap rails piled up now. Chinaberry tree and some palm trees. Right here is where the uh, office of the Pacific Fruit Express was. That was the uh, agency that was in charge of all the reefer cars back in the day that iced up at the ice deck where we just were. And uh, that building was still there. I, I really don't remember when they took it out. Maybe in the late 80s when SP was getting rid of all of its old buildings for property tax purposes. But I do remember it looked like actually looked like a small house rather than an actual office building. But uh, there again, I don't remember when they took that out. But they definitely took it out. Down a little further, see this BNSF coming off of the uh, line at Kern Junction into the yard. And the yard proper down here with the storage tracks. And if you look down there, that looks like the uh, SJVR crossing over out of the yard. That looks like he's just pulling up towards the 50 lead to get out on the uh, number Two track, looks like a Union Pacific train down there pulling up to the office to do a crew change. Stays pretty busy, the San Joaquin Valley uses it, uh, Union Pacific locals use it, and then you have the uh, main line traffic through the yard by both UP and BNSF. Okay, this is a location called Quantico or Quantico if you're from Virginia or work for the FBI. And the reason it's called Quantico is because that street right over there that runs south from that intersection is Quantico Avenue. But anyway, uh, this is the south end, or to you old SP heads, the east end of the yard on the uh, number two track. You can see that switch up there going off, tracks going off to the right there. That is the end of the yard. That's where the, that is the south yard lead. There used to be a little shelter here. They called the sheep herder's shanty and the sheep herder was a guy who worked here in the train department. And all he did was line trains in and out of the yard. That was his job. They got rid of that job long, long ago. But I do remember when it was here. There also used to be, the switch is still here. There was a cross over here. And uh, that brought the trains in and out onto whatever track they needed. And the sheep herder was responsible for getting those switches lined as well. And uh, those signals there, back then, they were a little further back. But they were, uh, it, but it was a big one of the big cast iron black signal bridges that went all the way across the track. So now they're these fancy new LEDs. But anyway, this is that part of the yard. Well, that'll wrap up the tour of the Bakersfield yard. Sorry there wasn't more to see, but uh, I hope the uh, history of the things that used to be there and the story of some of that stuff was uh, interesting to some of you. I hope it was interesting to all of you. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to do that, and uh, hope everybody liked it. Remember to tell your friends about it. That is the uh, Beale Avenue overpass that we were under just a minute ago. Still just as noisy as it was then. But uh, anyway, hope everybody enjoyed this. As usual, if you have any comments or ideas, let me know uh, down below, and see what we can do. See you later.